So the theme for April is awakening. And it's, you know, it's funny because awakening is one of my favorite topics in the whole wide world. And I love reading books about it. I love talking with my friends about it. I love thinking about it. But what I found this week was trying to write a sermon about it was surprisingly hard. And I think maybe it's because the concept itself is so broad and I feel like I've been on a continuous path of awakening for so many years. I've found it hard to take a concept that is so alive in my own life and adequately express something so vibrant in 15 minutes of words. And so maybe I think today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with what I wrote for our newsletter that's coming out on Tuesday, and then I'll go from there. So many times when we think of awakening, we think of a spiritual awakening. However, we can awaken to anything. We awaken into the world of silence, science as we begin school. We awaken into the world of literature when we read our first novel. We awaken into the realm of nature when we go to the beach for the first time or watch a beautiful sunset or enter into an unexplored beautiful mountain trail. We awaken when we allow ourselves to experience something new something different, something beautiful or magnificent. When our eyes are opened to unlimited possibilities or a new way to see the world. Awakening can be as innocent as a baby who slowly opens her eyes from a lovely nap and quietly, peacefully looks around and smiles as she sees her mother's loving face peering down on her, that too is awakening. It can be an idea, a concept, or one of those once in a lifetime aha moments that brings in a whole new paradigm in the blink of an eye. It is an expansion, a gentle awareness that whispers, there is no going back. Awakening should not and does not have to be scary. It can be slow and gentle happening over many years or even many lifetimes. There is no hurry. There is no rush. It can happen in the blink of an eye with a moment of insight that leads to a full transformation. Or it might simply be a beginning, a first step, a nudging or confirmation that we are on the right path. True awakening can happen quietly over time. And then one day you look back and you realize just how far you have come, which might be an awakening in and of itself. Anita Moriani says, quote, when we awaken to the truth of who we really are, we realize that we are all connected. We are all expressions of the same consciousness, all facets of the same whole. We awaken to this truth after we die, but if we knew this during our life, we would never harm one another. We need to inspire each other to wake up to the truth that the essence that looks from behind your eyes is simply another facet of the essence 
that expresses itself from behind mine. I was reading a lovely book this week called To Hear the Forest Sing by Margaret Delaney. And in this collection of little short reflections, she describes her experience of awakening in this way. One evening as she was out on a walk, she writes, all of a sudden, I was aware of a presence a real, very individual presence. I was given no name and I did not jump, nor have I ever wished to jump to any conclusive idea of who this presence might have been. A friend's mother in the last months of her life reported to having met the Buddha in her bathroom. All I can find, although I can find no grounds to disbelieve her, I can make no such claims of my own. In my readings since this time, the closest term I have found to name this presence is the Sufi expression, the beloved. This presence, merely by its proximity on my little hill, seemed to create of me another beloved, seemed to wish to share this quality with me so that we seemed to be one together. I have no idea how long I remained in the company of this presence, but when I returned to the house and my friends, I was altered and lay awake all night with the exhilaration of this meeting. I begin to see now that I have lived my life slowly, ever so faintly gaining awareness of and too often losing sight of this presence. But I believe that every year, by just the slightest margin, my awareness has grown, as if that evening on the hillside, a path opened to me where previously I had only seen forest, a path that I have been stumbling along for the past 30 years. I have given up looking for that thunderous and search only for those light, quiet, tiptoeing revelations that I have learned to recognize. As we awaken, we begin to see things in a different way, in a new light. When we begin to awaken, we need to be willing to take a look at some of our old paradigms, assumptions, and beliefs. What in our lives are we, are we willing to reassess? What are we willing to let go of? What are we willing to embrace or bring into our lives? And it's okay to acknowledge that as we grow, as we change, as we expand, as we awaken, there just might be a little bit of grief with letting go within the transformation itself. The truth is it's about allowing ourselves to become just a little bit different. It's about entering into the unknown and trusting that everything is going to be okay. And so as we grow, as we change, new things will be revealed. And it's like what I showed this morning for the time for all ages. There are things in our lives that have been with us around us all of this time, but we just haven't been ready to see. And yet I believe when we're ready to awaken in whatever capacity we are, those things will show themselves. They'll just gently reveal themselves and they might reveal themselves to one person in a different way or at a different time than somebody else because awakening 
never ever happens the same way at the same time with different people. It is a very individual, gradual, and personal journey. And the good news is that it's not a race. There is no time limit. It can be slow and gradu gradually peaceful. We look around and we notice something new. We incorporate that into our lives. And then something else comes to us and we incorporate that into our life. And we look back five years, 10 years, 20 years later and realize just how much we've been changed throughout this slow, gradual process. I believe that this is a process that is happening and working within every one of us. And we can also put up some resistance. We can bring in resistance when we decide that we just don't want to change. But the problem is, is that if we decide we don't want to change, then we put up a barrier to allowing ourselves to grow. And when we don't allow ourselves to grow, we end up staying stagnant. And when we feel like we are stagnant, we can begin to believe that we're stuck or trapped in lives that are no longer bringing meaning. And that's when we can begin to feel like our lives just really don't feel very vibrant. We might begin to feel disconnected or somewhat unmotivated or lost. And so if you find yourself in that situation or are just feeling somewhat bored with life, my invitation to you is to reflect on what have you consciously or unconsciously stopped allowing yourself? to do? Have you unconsciously stopped allowing yourself to change, to grow? Have you blocked your own awakening? Are there hidden pictures right in front of us that maybe it's time to fill in with some color? Maybe we do this by bringing music into our lives, bringing laughter into our lives, going out and inviting new people into our lives who become new friends that we just haven't met yet. Is it time to bring new experiences back into our lives? The opportunities to start creating life in a new way are always always around us. And sometimes we just get stuck in a rut and simply become blind to the opportunities and the beauties that exist. Neil Donald Walsh says, in re reference to raising consciousness, he says, the process of blending the mind's total attention to the soul's total awareness is what is most accurately called consciousness raising. When your mind and your soul hold the same data, hold the same idea and possess the same perspective, you can be said to be fully conscious. So I'm going to repeat that. The process of blending the mind's total attention to the soul's total awareness is what he refers to as consciousness raising. When our mind and our soul hold the same data, the same ideas and possess the same perspective, 
we can be said to be fully conscious. It's just something to think about. So last night, actually, instead of working on this sermon, I actually had to pull my heads out of the cloud and spend a few hours relearning algebra. And that's a very concrete, linear exercise. And it's something I haven't thought about for years and actually decades. Um, but I do know that my brain can comprehend it because I did pass when I was in high school. But I was doing it because, you know, Danny is struggling a little bit with algebra. And um, so I realized that I needed to change my own consciousness a little bit, bring it back down, get it regrounded and centered, and learn something new that I already knew. But that's kind of an example also of awakening because it's growing, it's doing something new. It can be concrete, but it's different. And it's looking at the world from a different point of view. And so when we talk this month about awakening, it does not always have to be from that spiritual point of view. If spirit language is just not something that is really all that interesting. It's not always about spiritual. It's just about who we are as human beings, how we are growing, how we are learning, how we are changing and expanding, and how we are beginning to open up, acknowledge, and see, experience some of those hidden connections that we have forgotten or haven't noticed yet. And so my invitation with you today is just to spend some time this week thinking about your own awakening. Have there been times in your life when you felt like you were slowly raising your consciousness? Have there been times in your life when you had that aha moment and the world just changed immediately and life was different? Are there parts of your life that you are not consciously or unconsciously allowing to expand and change out of a sense of fear or safety? And is it time to maybe rethink it and allow some new experiences, some new paradigms, some new ways of being in the world to come and be part of your world. Like I said, this is a much broader topic that you can just talk about in 15 minutes. So the invitation is that this is just the beginning as we begin to reflect on it and think about it. And so I'm going to close today with another quote from Joel Goldsmith from the art of spiritual healing. And he said, God's work is done, finished and complete, but it is unfolding to our conscious awareness in proportion as we learn the truth and how to bring ourselves into harmony with that truth. The unfolding to our, to our conscious awareness in proportion as we learn the truth and how to bring ourselves into harmony with that truth. This week, I invite you to think about where in your life you are in alignment with that truth and that harmony. And now let us close this morning in song what a wonderful world. <laughs>